Okay, I'll stop this training just for a minute. My name's Jay Devon, and I want to share plenty of things to help everyone to be happier on the court. Today's video is again about Rafael Nadal and at the US Open right now. So we're going to look at a couple of, uh, well, there's a myriad of ways that he wins the points, a lot of different ways that he wins the points, but we're going to just look at one, but we're going to do detail in this one. So we're going to have a look at a bit more in depth, and then we're going to also look at what is a major way that you can beat him, that he's vulnerable and many points that he's losing and being happening in this way. So there's two things there. We're going to look at one really specific way of how he's winning points and another one of how you can get the points off him. But hey, the guy's amazing. I'm going to put down the link from the previous U uh, Rafael Nadal video I did during this US Open already. Uh, but he's, he's, you know, he started professional tennis there at 2003 when he was 17 years old. Uh, then he won the US Open four times. He was runner-up once. So in 2010, he won it for the first time to complete his career Grand Slam already. Uh, and he beat Djokovic. Then the following year, Djokovic defeated him in 2011. 2012, he didn't play. Then back when he's in 2013, he wins the whole thing again. So this time again against Djokovic. So he's got the 2-1 up at the US Open Finals on Djokovic there. And then 2014, he was out again injured. Then 2017, he won it without even losing a set, defeating Kevin Anderson in the final. And then, guess what? He won it again in 2019 against Medvedev in a, in a long five-set match. Then uh, 2020, he didn't play because of all the concerns about the tournament and everything that was happening in the world at that point. 2021, he was injured, and now he's back again. So it's almost like every time he plays US Open, he's winning the whole thing or runner-up. So he's a very big, strong contender to win. Even this late in his career, he's still got an amazing record where, uh, in my opinion, he lost at Wimbledon because he was unable to play. He forfeited, but a lot of people are saying he's undefeated in Grand Slams this year because he won the Australian Open. He won Roland Garros. He went to the semi-finals at Wimbledon, but then he wasn't able to do his match against Kyrgios. So if you can't play, to me, that still counts as a loss. You know, how your physical body is, is also part of the game. It's a huge part of the game. So if your body's not ready to go, to me, it's a loss, but people are saying, okay, he's gone into the US Open. Now he's won the first two rounds. So I watched uh, the second, third, and fourth sets of his match, the second round with Fonini after he lost the first set. And then he was down 4-2 in the second set. So he's won through there and he's back in. So now what we're going to look at is Nadal, when he's playing, he's, he's had 77 matches. He's won 66 so far and he's lost 11. And he's repeating a lot of things to get the points because if you're successful in doing something, you're going to do it again and again and again. So the trick is to have a look in more detail of what's going on there. So now, one of the things I'm going to show you with the board here, just getting the court ready, just going to make a singles court only. So there we have it. There is. Now when we're coming up here for the, the points, is we're going to have the, the smiley face here, is going to be uh, indicating Nadal. So when he's hitting the ball here, what he's trying to do most of the time is he's trying to uh, let the ball come back far to him. So he's going to be positioned quite far back behind the baseline here at the back of the court. And he's going to be trying to see, can he take away the power from the ball, slow the point down, and he's going to try to put a big rainbow-shaped trajectories on the ball. So he's going to try to lift the ball with high with a lot of arc. So then this here is the net. So that means his margin for error over the net is going to be huge because he's playing really high above the net. So he's got not a lot of chance of getting the net. And then he plays normally in the safety rectangle here. So what I see is when he hits the ball is most of the time what he's doing until you show him he needs to take a lot more risk and do a lot more because you're giving him trouble is that he's going to give a nowhere near the net ball and a nowhere near out on the left or right and a nowhere out on the too far opposite baseline. And he's going to be bouncing a lot of balls here. But because he's giving it a lot of arc, the ball's going to carry quite far on the second bounce. So the players tend to stay back. Now what he's trying to do then is he's, as if you would have had a look at my previous video, which the link will be below here, is he's the beast. Uh, I'm referring to him as the beast and the other players are the toothpicks. So he has the huge physical superiority advantage, far better physical athlete and genetics than all the other players. So he wants to be about a physical attrition battle. So he's happy for loads of balls to go back and forward as much as he wants because the longer the game goes the happier and more likely he feels that he's going to win so he's trying to keep that ball in play be very safe not near the lines not near the net taking no risk not going for really high 
uh, power shots, just giving a good spin to the ball. He's got the feel for that whip action. And the other players are going to feel that, hey, I cannot keep uh, going with Nadal as much as he can. So I'm going to need to try to really go for broke on some shots and play uh, high risk tennis, even if they're playing some good rally and keep, keeping it competitive and keeping Nadal out on the court for pretty much every match he's doing is three hours or more is uh, even if he's winning all the three sets. So, so that the point is long and they're going to take, uh, at some point, they're going to take a big risk. So then they're going to do all the opposite. They're going to hit low near the net, high towards their full power and very close to the lines because that guy's got a lot of energy and he's fast. So then they feel they really have to pump that ball from really deep in the court. So because they're so far away from him and he's so fast, he can reach most of the ball. So in a way, he's just luring a trap and he's setting them up and letting them take the bait and then the players are doing that all the time from playing from back here behind the line very far away from Nadal and then when he's not giving pace trying to force a lot of pace on the ball which is of course a very uh, hard to produce and even if you do do it it's very hard to do it often enough to be able to win a match so Nadal's playing very much in his percentage by doing this type of thing and it's happening over and over again okay so this is the one of the number one ways where Nadal's winning the point now what we're going to take a look at is more interesting to me is how can people do something to be beating him? So he has a lot of problem. So here we're gonna move him away from here. Now, well, I'll put him back in. Now, this is one of the scenarios where you see Nadal lose a lot of points. And of course, it needs to be happening a lot more often. And of course, uh, you know, to maximize your results in, in uh, the tennis matches is not all points are equal. Some points are massively more important than others. So if you're doing this on the critical moments like break points, uh, gain point opportunities, set point opportunities, match point opportunities, then this is going to be a high probability for conversion for you. But that's not what I see happen. When I see it happening, it seems to be nowhere near as often enough and uh, in quite random situations. So then it looks like as, as if people aren't actually doing it on purpose when, of course, that's what you want to be doing. So, of course, what Nadal is doing, being a left-handed, so he's hitting his forehand out this way, playing against someone here, is he wants to be getting a forehand as much as he can. So when you're playing here, and the often thing that will happen is because people are uh, trying to keep it off his forehand, is the ball is going to get targeted towards here on Nadal's side. Now, Nadal's here, and on this side, he's going to be doing his backhand, which is also quite amazing, but in his mind, he doesn't really want to do that. He wants to do a forehand. So he's prepared to run really far away from his backhand and do a forehand to position himself right over here. Now, what happens is when here, he's playing here and the, the balls are here, I'll often when you have a right-hander versus a left-hander scenario, there's quite a bit of down the line rallies because he's getting a backhand Nadal if he can't get the forehand and then he's going to take his backhand back down the line and then because people don't want to give him the forehand they're going to bring back down here so there's quite a bit of this but so because of this situation that means what happens is as the ball's coming out to here for Nadal is what you want to do is you want to try to hit the ball out to here but you want to try to allow him play as close as you can towards the singles line allow him by not hitting the ball too hard and flat and high risk is to actually have the time to be happy so that he can move right over here and then he's going to be playing from this position here doing the forehand that he wants because he's got so much energy and he wants to hit forehands he's out here and he's going to be hitting a forehand even though the ball has come towards his backhand side here and then what happens from here is when he hits the ball uh, when you're doing this shot, especially when you're doing, as I mentioned, to take away some power out of the ball, give it more arc and height and depth, so there's not a lot of pace on, Nadal is probably the best strategist in the game. So he knows that, unlike the trap he's setting for you, what I just mentioned, when the ball's high and deep, without much pace on it, Nadal's not going to go for the go to broke shot, you know, go for broke shot. He's going to give you a similar one back. So he's going to give more of a high spin shot with an arc. So when this happens here, that means Nadal has put himself so much over in this corner, right? So when he does this type of shot, he'll often put a, a ball like this here into this point to try to give it to you on your backhand. Then what you want to do is actually don't do what he's doing, is take your backhand. So if I'm the, the right-handed player here, here, who's got the, oh man, I'm playing with Nadal, look like a, look, look, look like a dead ghost person here, I can't win, is when you're doing this is actually take it on your backhand here okay from this side and take the ball and bring it out here and when you bring it out here 
we do not want power, we do not want uh, depth uh, as in terms of towards the baseline here. We want to short angle the ball because now that means that Nadal has moved so far over here that this is going to be a problem for him. All right. Now, of course, whatever happens is when you take it to a higher level and you do more things, then this scenario is going to be giving him even more problem because what we're trying to do is we're trying to give him things that it's going to be higher degree of difficulty. We've got to get out of this scenario where he's just setting the trap for us and we're exploding the errors and he's winning and you're getting worn out and he just doesn't get tired, not in this century. So, so when you do this is when he's giving this ball here is try once you've hit that first shot is stop being like everybody who's on the TV and hanging back here. Once you set this ball here and you're trying to tempt him towards getting the shot he actually wants to do, so he's actually helping you, is you're trying to now trap him as you get him to actually get a forehand and run right over to this corner. As soon as you see that, that he's got looking like he's going to get a backhand there, uh, sorry, he's going to get a forehand when you've hit it towards his backhand corner, is straight away move up and get right up on this line here. Because when you get closer to him, that's going to give him lesser time to be able to go cover that ball. Then when this ball comes in here, is the other big things you can do to help you have an even bigger chance to have a big success with this play is it's already successful, but to do it better and better, you're going to even more success. Then your percentage win is going to go up even higher on this immediate shot or the next one to finish. Is that when he hits the ball to you, he's going to be giving that slower high arc and more spin ball. So what we want to do is we want to change the whole tempo. So it's like catching him by surprise and switching everything. Is, and some people like Djokovic can do it really well. Andy Murray's done it really well in the past where they take the ball really early in Vavrinka and they've won so many points watching him uh, uh, do this. Is They get the ball here, they come in, they get it early, they get the ball on the rise, they flatten it out, so much less a spin. They hit the ball when it's high and early on the rise above the net level and then they really drive through the ball and put pace onto it and they go out towards this side, towards the backhand. So then as Nadal is now here, okay, because when you're coming in and getting it earlier, then it's more likely that he's still gonna be trying to stop and catch his weight from falling this way from running so far around here, is then he's gonna to have to try to stop and break and move out. So the, the quicker you can have the ball getting out that way, then the higher probability of success you're gonna have and the less chance Nadal's gonna be able to return the ball. But of course he's amazing, so there's a good chance he's gonna get anyway, but we have to do everything we can to make it as difficult as possible for him. So we do this shot here, He's trying to do this, and then Nadal's going to be coming out here. So then what happens is, if you've been watching the games all the time like I have for so many years, is if Nadal is put in this situation, a lot of times he doesn't get the ball back in if you do this very well. And if he does get it back in, and he's on the sprint this way, because now he's gone so far from there, and you took the ball early, you flatten it out, you put more speed, and he didn't just hit it here, so he only has to run to here. Deep and hard is you took it wider and more, so now he's having to go right out here is when Nadal's on the big run out this way, he's always normally going for the go, to broke, go for broke shot and he's not aiming to come back. And he wins so many points. It's like almost a guarantee he wins the point. If you're not alert, if he can get out there, is he just keeps running and he just rips a big forehand down the line and he doesn't try to come back at all. Okay, most of the time the people are here waiting for that ball because they're on the diagonal. But when Nadal's on the full sprint and his legs are going that way and his shoulders are going that way, then there's not a lot of chance he's going to bring it back across and he's not just going to give you a soft rally because he's so far out of the court. So then of course what you have to do is always be prepared because this guy's so good and everyone you have to always be prepared for the next move. It's like a chess match. You've got to have your next move ready. Okay, all plan, all do this on the practice court is that you hang here where you would be because you're normally going to recover the diagonal place so that's going to be easier for you to cover all the balls better is when he goes for this shot here is you hang here so he sees you here, but as he's getting closer and closer to the ball and sprinting far out, and he's gonna go for the go to broke, go for broke shot, which is pretty much 100 out of 100, he does this shot down here, and he does it with speed and he flattens it out more because he's trying to end you, okay? So he's taking the high risk now. So we've turned the tables on Nadal, we're getting him to do the really high risk. But for him, because everybody's not aware, they're hanging here and he's actually getting a winner most of the time out of this. Not even this person even touching the ball. So as I said, as he's getting close to touch time, you've got to hold it and delay it so you don't tip him off that you've gone to run for that corner. He can't see you, he's got to look at the ball for his shot. Is late last minute, you're going to move across here before he, hit, he even hits it, okay? Because he's going to give it to you fast and you want to do a very small short preparation, just a block, because all we need, because he's going to hit that and keep going, he's not coming back, is if he gets this power shot in here, is we're just going to try to get a block back to where we hit it from the first time, okay? If you do this scenario, uh, 
you know, I'm going to see if I can go on and have a look at some match where everybody can go and see it on YouTube and I'll go refer to it and I'll show this somebody doing this effectively. Somebody, uh, Nadal doing the winner and somebody doing this effectively so Nadal either doesn't return it or he does return it and someone can get the ball back and how is Nadal when he's doing the situation. So there's a lot of squiggles and lines here but this is the idea is when you're, you're doing something like this a lot of times it's going to be like that. You need to actually attack into the strength which is considered the strength but actually Nadal's strength is when he's hitting the ball and he's running to his forehand this way away from a backhand is his strongest forehand. The one where you're going to have the chance of winning is when he's running towards his forehand corner which is actually quite a pattern for most of the top players. Running towards their forehand corner is not their strongest point besides of course the mercurial Ivan Lendl whose signature shot was the on the run forehand to the line when he's a right hander so he was running this way. So this is the scenario here. I'm sure people might have some questions about that. So I'm happy to answer questions. All you have to do is leave comments in this YouTube link below and I'll get to you there. But I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna look at some footage and put some examples here where you can also go and have a look and have a look at this, what I'm showing you and with this diagram. And then you can look at the footage of Nadal actually doing this and people doing it to Nadal. And then you can have more understanding for that. But as I was saying uh, earlier on, is that uh, all the players, they can be beaten, okay? There's just a matter of who's doing what to whom and when, okay? So the better you're doing the things at the right time and what you're doing is gonna significantly change the outcomes. So working on your strategy and your patterns of play and your points is really important. And when you're watching the game, for me, it'll be massively more interesting uh, when people are playing on the tour and the matches are there, you're trying to get viewers more interested in the sport, is we should be giving more interesting insights like this into the finer details of how people are getting points where they can be exposed. You see, the, the thing with Nadal is he's getting away with this thing so much is that when this first ball gets over here, he doesn't even recover to the opposite diagonal where he should because that would make him not exposed to this problem. Is he hangs over here because he knows that people are going to come here and he wants the forehand. So he's actually, in my view, inviting us all to do this. So now all I want to see is people take up his invitation and bring this combination on Nadal and then see how he likes that.